Welcome everyone. Welcome to our third DMS Ambassador event. Thank you for being with us today. And most importantly, thank you for your support of our incredible community and of all the businesses that we are all here to champion and help through these difficult times. We are going to move straight into the one-on-one -on -one networking warm-up for our program today. You will be asked for access to your camera and audio. When we move to this next room, please ensure you click on the button, get ready to network. You'll find it at the bottom of the page and that will enable your participation in the networking that we know so many of our DMS ambassadors have asked for. Each connection will last three minutes and you'll then be connected with someone new. Enjoy and we'll see you right back here at 12 o'clock. Welcome back everyone and good afternoon. Bonjour tout le monde for those who are just joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. My name is Sonia Shorey. I serve as the Vice President, Strategy, Marketing and Communications for Invest Ottawa and Bayview Yards. And on behalf of our entire team, we are so honored to welcome you to our third ambassador networking event for the DMS program. Bienvenue à notre événement pour souligner le travail de nos ambassadeurs. I would like to begin today by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin peoples have lived on this land since time immemorial. We are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory and gather together as a community. One year ago this month, the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Ottawa and the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. We know the challenges facing our community have been and continue to be immense. The health crisis created a subsequent economic crisis and small businesses like those gathered here today are among the hardest hit in our economy. As we enter another incredibly challenging time, we are here to thank you for your commitment to small business. We're here to listen, to gather your ideas and suggestions and to take action on them to the greatest degree of our ability. As we welcome the coming of spring this weekend and the snow slowly disappears, we see vaccines beginning to be administered in our community. Many more are on the horizon. With the support of our mayor and our city, patios are opening safely earlier than expected. We want to build on these promising steps and help everyone to overcome the remaining hurdles that lie ahead. Among the most important, our small business community. Every day I'm inspired by the Main Street businesses, their resilience, their strengths, their innovation and ingenuity, and the way they have pulled together during this time. That is all of you. We know that there is no single solution. We're committed to adapting as we go at Invest Ottawa to meet the changing needs of our business community during these very unpredictable times. This is our focus, helping you succeed, helping you survive this pandemic and thrive in the new economy. Some of the ideas that we're working towards launching new promotional campaigns that help drive new customers to you and other Main Street businesses safely. This includes amplifying the great work that you and so many Main Street businesses have done with our transformation teams, with videos and photos and social media campaigns, new websites. We wanna make sure that those are front and center. Joining the City of Ottawa and valued partners like Acobia, the Ottawa Board of Trade and RJA, creating greater calls to buy local, enjoy takeout and visit patios safely promoting vaccines as they roll out across our community and encouraging everyone to continue following the important health and safety guidelines, creating events that Main Street businesses and their owners can put to work with new insight to help grow their business during and beyond the pandemic, and helping as many businesses as possible benefit from DMS in the weeks ahead to get online, get selling, and generating new revenue. This includes taking full advantage of Shop Here if you need an e-commerce store, events such as our Location Matters event on Tuesday, March 23rd next week, and our Playing Hurt workshop for women business owners on Main Street on March 31st. We're increasing our advisory services and capacity to try and provide more rapid support and continuing to get transformation teams going as quickly as possible. Many of you are small business owners. We deeply appreciate your commitment to helping fellow businesses, our friends and neighbors take advantage of this DMS program. During this incredibly difficult period, we know it's more important than ever. As our ambassadors, you already know about all the details of this program. We're here to help you and many more small businesses across our region. 
Today, we want to explore how we can create more opportunity for you, how we can add better value to you, get more ambassadors engaged so that they know and take advantage of this program and help hopefully help far more businesses survive this pandemic. As many of you are small, own, small business owners yourself, you have requested networking opportunities like those that we just enjoyed with fellow DMS leaders and DMS client companies. You want to build new relationships and identify new business opportunities. This event aims to help deliver on some of those goals. We have breakout groups that will follow today's program that aim to facilitate dialogue, new ideas, and ideas for us at Invest Ottawa to help better support you during these remaining weeks. We would also like to extend special thanks, of course, to our mayor, to all of our partners, our advisors, our employees, and to FedDev Ontario for the generous support of the DMS program. We are recording today's main stage program so we can share it with others who weren't available to join us. And with that, it is now my great pleasure to introduce our president and CEO at Invest Ottawa, Michael Tremblay, who will bring a few words. Welcome, Mike. Thanks so much, Sonia. Can everyone hear me okay? Excellent, great. Just the incredible courage and resiliency of our small, uh, our main street businesses. Uh, we're a small business as well. Um, you've shown uh, so much courage and, and uh, you've been fighting the good fight and we're, we're just proud to work with you. And so thank you for everything that you've done to manage your way through this, this very difficult period. I also want to thank our DMS ambassadors. Uh, we're a small company and uh, having your support uh, in uh, reaching out to those companies that need that help has been really invaluable. It's been very difficult for us to reach everyone, so your support has been absolutely necessary and, and we're grateful for that. Um, our company as well uh, has worked very hard to mobilize the Digital Main Street program. Uh, and I, to our staff, I just wanna take a moment to thank you. We, we brought this to you uh, almost at the drop of a hat. Uh, you grabbed a hold of it. You worked so hard in making it, uh, it happen. Uh, and it's been an enormous amount of effort. Uh, and so you never look back. And I want to really thank you for that heavy effort. It's it's really greatly appreciated. And I'd also have to thank, uh, and Sonia's mentioned this already, FedDev Ontario, what a great partner, uh, giving us the resources we needed to get this thing off the ground and to be able to uh, stick with it. I, I really do appreciate their ongoing partnership along so many different lines. Our goal, of course, is to provide the kind of services and the support that you need now and ongoing, of course. And, you know, that's really why we're here today. So I, I feel like um, it's really important that if we want to ensure that we're get, getting you the services that you need to not only help you today, but to prepare you for the future, that today's breakout sessions are extremely important. The candid feedback, uh, the input into our programming, um, you know, we, we put a lot into this and we want to make sure that you're getting the benefits that you need. Uh, and so we really do want to hear from you today. That's so important. I did also want to take a moment to thank uh, a few of our partners that have been advocating on behalf of small businesses, specifically the uh, Board of Trade, uh, uh, also uh, Acobia, uh, and of course, RGA. Uh, you've been developing a lot of really important approaches uh, to share with the province. And yesterday's letter to the Premier was uh, a testament to your commitment to small businesses. So I want to really thank you for that and let you know we're in this together. We're, uh, we're aligned with your direction and very grateful for the leadership that you've been showing. And just to conclude my remarks, I just had a few moments to kick off today's event. I also want to take a moment to thank Mayor Watson and Dr. Etches. Uh, together, they have really, um, you know, ensured uh, that when you think about what has to happen over this period, uh, to have a healthy, vital economy requires a, a healthy community. And I think they've done an amazing job of balancing the economy with the health requirements uh, to make sure that our city is uh, well positioned for the future. So thank you for your, your leadership. And I can tell everyone on the call, uh, I am just bullish in Ottawa's future. Our best days are ahead. And uh, we're here to, to serve and to support you. So I really look forward to today's event. Thank you. Back to you, Sonia. I, I could not 
with you more. I am so bullish on Ottawa and so inspired by the incredible partners, collaborators, and every ambassador who is with us today and so many more. We have almost 200 ambassadors in this region now. That's unbelievable to me. And we are just incredibly grateful. Thank you, Mike, for your kind words. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce someone who requires no introduction. He is truly the greatest ambassador that Ottawa has. And tomorrow he will celebrate a very special milestone. Our own Mayor Jim Watson will become the longest serving mayor in the history of Ottawa. He also serves as our incredible co-chair. We are delighted to welcome Mayor Watson. Thank you so much and congratulations on this very special milestone. Well, thank you uh, very much, Sonia. Merci beaucoup, Sonia. And thank you for your great work and that of uh, Michael's and the whole team at Invest Ottawa. I'm really, really proud to be associated with, with Invest Ottawa. And it's a pleasure to uh, join you, uh, our digital Main Street ambassadors, for this uh, virtual networking event. I'm looking forward to a real networking event sometime soon, as opposed to, to um, virtual. But for the time being, this is the next best thing. Um, I also want to recognize Michelle Agru, Executive Director of the Council of Business uh, Associations, Michael Kern, of course, who does so much great work uh, advocating and telling the stories of Ottawa businesses, uh, published in the OBJ, who joined us. And also, we're going to hear from two small business owners, uh, Oase Khan of Ottawa Samosa and Jill Wright of Hearts Content uh, Consignment, will share their experiences with a digital Main Street program. And, and I echo the comments of of uh, Michael, our thanks to the federal and provincial government. Merci à tous uh, pour vos efforts. I want to start by thanking, <clears throat> excuse me, our Digital Main Street ambassadors for the wonderful work uh, that you've done in our local business committee. I wasn't aware it was uh, over 200. That's great. Uh, and um, they've signed up uh, to help out with this program. And it's been said many times before, and I'll say it again today, our local Main Street businesses really are the backbone of our local economy. And they also mean a lot to our sense of community. Uh, they are the ones that sponsor the, uh, the kids' soccer teams and hockey teams and uh, put together a uh, gift basket uh, for a raffle or a draw uh, for the Cancer Society. Now, this year has been exceptionally difficult, I don't know, stating the obvious, uh, for our local businesses. And that's why the city continues to support Main Street businesses through these uh, very uh, difficult and challenging times. I'm pleased with the work uh, that the Economic Partners Task Force, co-chaired by uh, Councillors Eli El Shantiri and Laura Dudas, um, have done to help small businesses. Uh, my colleague uh, Jenna Suds, uh, who is uh, also involved with Invest Ottawa uh, board, I thank her as well. And Jan Harder, of course, who plays such a key role uh, in economic development, along with other, other um, challenges uh, on the planning front. So in the early days of the pandemic, we put in place the city's property tax hardship deferral program, which extended to tax deferrals to approximately 1,900 property owners, both residents and small businesses, who need a little bit of breathing room and help with their cash flow. We also rolled out a robust buy local campaign, our thanks to Rogers Cable, who did a lot of the publicity for us for free, as well as a rural cycling and tourism campaign which encouraged downtown residents to rediscover the city's beautiful rural areas. I often um, tell ambassadors who I have a chance to meet with that Ottawa is 82% rural, agricultural, and uh, forest. Um, it's not made up of subdivisions or downtown or the market or anything like that. It's, it's rural. And we have some wonderful rural villages uh, in all parts of the city. Uh, last summer, we expanded opportunities for restaurants and stores to do businesses outside where customers typically felt safer. Under the Patio Innovation Program, approximately 350 patios and cafes sprung up around the city. That's roughly 260 more than in 2019. So really quite an increase in the number of patios because the restaurateurs saw the patios as a bit of a lifeline. Uh, we also had uh, seven road closures in place for the purpose of expanding patios. And these uh, provided approximately 500 paying seats to those uh, benefiting restaurants and their very happy customers. And I'm very pleased that we decided to maintain all these measures in 2021, as well as extending patio hours until 2 a.m. Now, we're only going to get to 2 a.m. if we get back into the green zone uh, of the COVID um, outline. But I, I did, along with Tim Tierney, just announce uh, yesterday that we're speeding up the outdoor patio season. It's normally opening on right of ways of the cities on April 1st. It's now open now uh, because uh, obviously these restaurants are really hard hit. And you can only get uh, you know, 10 people to sit with the new COVID regulations imposed by the province. So the patios will help 
uh, significantly. Uh, people still have to maintain social distance. They have to uh, seat only four people at a table and uh, you can't uh, be milling about like you're at a bar or something like that. So there, there are restrictions, but it does give more seating capacity to the restaurants have been hard hit and we're working really hard to get the province to uh, uh, make a more sensible uh, solution to the capacity issue. It should be based on um, the square footage of your property as opposed to a, um, a per capita of 10 people. You know, 10 people in a restaurant that sits 100 is different than 10 people that sits in a restaurant that sees a restaurant of, of 20 seats. So we've written to the Premier and, and we encourage uh, others to, and I thank the Regroupement des gens d'affaires the Council of BIAs and, uh, of course, the Board of Trade for sending a very good letter yesterday to Premier Ford, and I just sent a follow-up to the Premier just a few moments ago. For its part, Invest Ottawa has been uh, busier than ever and did a tremendous job leading the Digital Main Street program. <clears throat> Excuse me, the program delivered with the help of our BIAs and the Ottawa Board of Trade enables qualified applications like restaurants, retailers, skilled trades, and home-based businesses to access their own mini-marketing agency and professional support for free to get online, general, uh, generate new revenue, and prepare for the future. And the great news uh, is there's still time to take advantage of this program. We're thrilled that the uptake, uh, with the uptake, and I thank all Digital Main Street ambassadors for your support in promoting the program and uh, helping our small businesses thrive during these very difficult times. I'm pleased to uh, continue to champion uh, this program and help as many businesses as possible. And if you're not already ambassador, please consider joining us registration at investottawa.ca. Uh, please do that today. So again, uh, we're continuing to work hard. Uh, the pandemic has been uh, brutal and devastating to a lot of small businesses. We really encourage people, particularly those of us in government who have accepted a paycheck from the public every two weeks and have not lost a beat. We have the necessary capacity to go in and help these small businesses, buy gift cards, curbside pickup, um, ordering online as a result of work by, by the Digital Main Street program and uh, really go in and, and support these businesses in their time of need because uh, they really are suffering and we want to do whatever we can to uh, help those that are still surviving. And as we head into the summer season with more people vaccinated, uh, I too share the optimism, the bullish optimism uh, of a great future for our city. We have the lowest unemployment rate of the six major cities in Canada. Still too high, but we have a good base to build on, and let's move forward. Merci encore pour uh, votre bon travail, et um, uh, bon week-end tout le monde. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much, Mayor Watson. As we were coming into today's event, we were all chatting about the many different restaurants we were doing takeout from and patios that we would be visiting thanks to the rules that you have enabled. So thank you very much for being a true ambassador for our region and for DMS. Thank you. Thank you. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Michelle Gru, Executive Director for Cobia, representing 19 BIAs that make a tremendous impact on our community, small business, and this program. Michelle joined Mark Kalitsky, who is Chair of Cobia. You have both been outstanding partners. We could not have done this without you. We are incredibly grateful for all BIAs and their teams, the many directors and employees who have been together. Thank you, Michelle. I just wanted to give you a big help shout out and uh, and pass the virtual mic to you. Oh, thank you, Sonia. And a special thank you to Invest Ottawa for bringing Digital Main Street directly to Ottawa and providing local digital services for hundreds of businesses. It has been a real improvement for our BIAs. Thank you, Mayor Watson, for your ongoing support of small businesses and being a strong voice for Digital Main Street and our community. And Mayor Watson, I, I'll add this. Uh, I, I just received your, your uh, response and uh, follow up to Premier Ford, and I thank you for that. A BIA is a community of businesses that offers vitality, distinction, attraction, and uniqueness to their neighborhood. It is filled with mainly small businesses that are locally owned and operated, and we hope that we can keep it this way so that the neighborhoods remain unique and distinct. During this pandemic, these communities of which 100% are bricks and mortar have been devastated. But as you know, small business owners are both resourceful and resilient. They have risen to the challenge. With the support of their BIA office as a key resource for information, grants and programs, the business community has been navigating these rocky times. Each BIA office has acted as a digital Main Street ambassador. 
They are the facilitators and educators of the program and have collectively put hundreds of small businesses into digital Main Street. This is no easy task as a business owner's focus is on their business. It takes someone who is a trusted advisor to help them realize that one, this program is free, and two, this program will help their business exponentially. Through DMS, Ottawa Main Street businesses have received guidance from the Digital Service Squad in both English and French, and engaged the transformation team for digital marketing and social media plans, strategic advice on launching an online storefront, and the development of an e-commerce store. BIAs have been integral in special projects through DMS for their business members, including setting up a digital map of their area with direct links to all member businesses in Preston Street BIA and Bank Street BIAs, partnering with local technology partners to allow members to try third-party, excuse me, third-party delivery services for free in Vanier and Byward Market, enhancing a real-time directory for business members in Wellington West BIA and connecting hundreds of businesses with local photographers and videographers to create free digital content that highlights their uniqueness. Every BIA has engaged in this to a various capacity. With the recent change of moving back into the red zone, BIAs and our ambassadors are more needed now to continue providing our small businesses these free and very useful services. I urge everyone to keep the momentum going to share DMS services available as much as possible as it continues. We want our businesses to remain intact until this time ends and to make these the building blocks of a successful future. A few quotes I would like to share in closing. I received this note from Lindsay who owns a business in Spark Street BIA. True Bijou and Howard Fine Jewelers were a part of the Digital Main Street program. It was a wonderful experience working with the team of young digital professionals. In our opinion, this program was well thought out and provided practical support for small businesses, both in terms of navigating these times, but also setting us up for continued success in the retail world. Lori Millar, Executive Director of Preston Street BIA, said that using Digital Main Street in response to the pandemic has helped local businesses through the public health crisis and will remain a legacy of the pandemic's challenges. I absolutely agree and I hope we all continue this path. Thank you so much. I'll pass it over. <laughs> so much, Michelle. You, the BIAs, Mark, you are all awesome. I am so touched that you read those quotes. I mean, this is everything this program is about. It is about helping companies survive and thrive going forward and keeping all of that goodness that was created together with those firms going forward so that there's many, many different opportunities for revenues and customers in the future. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you. We at Invest Ottawa and Bayview Yards want to take a moment to acknowledge and speak to the continued prevalence of anti-Asian harassment, racism and violence that has become more and more apparent since the onset of COVID-19, the pandemic in Ottawa, across Canada and around the world. Our friends, colleagues and community members of Asian descent here in Ottawa have always made and continue to make enormous contributions to the prosperity and the well-being of our city. We stand firmly with our Asian heritage community during this time of unjust treatment and the resulting difficulties and fear that it spreads. As an organization that supports businesses and amplifies voices of local entrepreneurs, we are vocalizing our support for our local East and Southeast Asian businesses, friends, colleagues, and community members who are navigating these very real dangers. We are calling on our collective courage to interrupt racism and harassment when we see it in action and to check in with those who are experiencing this injustice to help get the support that they need. Now more than ever, we need to take great care of each other. We can do so by staying informed and equipping ourselves to be able to thoughtfully intervene. We encourage everyone to learn more on websites such as iHollaback.org, and we will share that with all ambassadors. They have bystander intervention and other resources available to help. With this very, very theme in mind and very objective in mind, I'm truly honored to share a very special video recorded by Korean Canadian actor, Paul Sung Hung Lee, who's spreading the word about Invest Ottawa's digital Main Street program for you. Jessica, over to you to play the video. Hey everyone, 
It's no secret that main street businesses like convenience stores, restaurants, and retail stores have been hit really hard by COVID-19. We all love supporting small business owners because they're the heart of the community, but running a small business isn't easy. I just learned about an Invest Ottawa program helping small businesses funded by the Government of Canada and FedDev Ontario. The program is called Digital Main Street, and it connects small businesses to totally free services, tools, and resources to help them with their digital marketing. If you're a small business owner, like a comic book store owner, that needs a digital marketing strategy or digital ads to help get your business some attention in this new normal, this program can help for free. Even if you don't know what kind of help you need or how to get started, Digital Main Street can help you figure it out, no matter what stage you're at. So, if you own a business in Eastern Ontario and you're looking to up your digital game, visit the link in the comment section below to apply for this free program. If you know someone who's running a business that could use some help making their business go digital too, then share the link with them. Now this government support won't last forever, so click that link and make your business future-proof. Okay, see you. Just awesome. We are so thrilled to have Paul's support and your support, and this event is all about you. And we're really excited now to move into a portion of our program where you're going to get to hear from some of your fellow champions and hear how some of those DMS resources have been put to work. I'm going to introduce someone, another one who needs no introduction, Michael Curran, president and co-owner of Great River Media, including the Ottawa Business Journal and Tacopia, which we at Invest Ottawa know very well. We're their biggest fans. He's been sharing our stories about our business, our tech and innovation community for more than 30 years as a trusted voice champion and friend. Michael, you are unwavering in your support of Main Street business throughout all of these unprecedented times. Your consistent promotion, encouragement and advocacy is valued by all of us at Invest Ottawa and our entire community. Thank you for being with us today. I'm going to hand the virtual mic over to you with our sincere thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Sonia. I appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you to you and Michael for uh, organizing today's event and, and thanks for those cool words. By the way, I just got to say I'm a big Kim, Kim's Convenience fan, so that was so cool to see uh, Paul on stage. And I also want to congratulate uh, Mayor Watson on that historic milestone. I try to be a, a student of history and have been digging into Ottawa's history through a few uh, books recently. So it's great to see the, the mayor hit that, uh, uh, that milestone. Uh, I'm a proud uh, DMS ambassador and uh, Invest Ottawa asked me here today to share two things. And uh, one is uh, why I love local. And I'm going to share a little bit of my personal background uh, that some of you may or may not be uh, aware of. And second, uh, I want to talk uh, just briefly about why I think uh, DMS is important. So a little bit of a personal story. I hope I don't bore anyone uh, with this. Uh, I'm proud to say, very proud to say, I'm born and raised uh, in Ottawa. Uh, both sides of my family uh, go back uh, well over 150 years. Uh, poor Irish farmers and, and French Canadians that uh, came to this city uh, when it was a, a new capital. Um, I've spent 30 years in local media, uh, some of that time before OBJ. I'm, I'm really going to date myself here. Uh, in those uh, early days, I was a city hall reporter before a pre that was before the pre-amalgamation or the amalgamation, excuse me, uh, of uh, of the city. So I was reporting on places, uh, cities like Gloucester and Cumberland. I don't know if uh, uh, people really remember on the call today that those were separate cities at some point. Uh, but I started getting really, uh, you know, curious about uh, how cities function and kind of how communities function. And uh, sometime around 1995, I founded a community newspaper in uh, in Orleans. Uh, that community newspapers, as almost all community newspapers were, uh, or was 100% reliant on, uh, on advertising revenue. And many of those advertisers, as you could appreciate, were Main Street businesses. So our very existence, uh, we were working for readers, but we were reliant on these Main Street businesses. And, and because of that, of course, I started having, you know, a lot of deep uh, personal and business discussions with some of these uh, businesses and came to understand their motivations. So when, you know, when I'm thinking about these Main Street businesses, I'm thinking of, you know, a deli, you know, a corner store, a barber shop uh, or a salon. 
you know, a specialty retailer, uh, an ethnic grocery store. Those are fantastic. And quite often, uh, as you know, Paul kind of touched on this point, um, those business owners were new Canadians that weren't simply trying to operate a business. They were, you know, without exaggerating, they were chasing a dream. And the dream was to create not only a successful business, but to find a better uh, life uh, for their families in Canada and more specifically uh, Ottawa. So, they're, you know, they had these incredibly altruistic um, desires and motivations. Um, they, they were so friendly, and I'm sure you guys have witnessed this on, on Main Street Business. They were so friendly and appreciative of their customers. They were so keen to give back to uh, local charities, sports teams. Uh, you know, there's so many examples of that. So I found this group particularly uh, inspiring. Uh, they inspired me by their level of commitment. Uh, they impressed me, you know, not only with their economic commitment uh, or impact on the city, but also their their personal commitments to the cities. And um, I think if there is one thing that's a little bit of a silver lining in the pandemic, it is that I think all of us have a deeper appreciation for the things that are close to our hearts and close to uh, what what makes the city livable. And certainly when I think of what's close to the top of that list, it really is local business and Main Street business. And, and that in a nutshell is why I, I love local. A second thought uh, that pertains a little bit more to DMS. So, you know, in these early interactions in the, in the 90s and ever since then with these business owners, I came to understand uh, the environment that they work in. They work uh, dozens and dozens of hours uh, per week. Uh, they work, you know, themselves uh, right to the bone. They've got limited uh, resources. They've got small teams. Uh, they have a limited amount of cash. And when I thought about uh, these people, what I came to realize is they only had time for what they considered to be the essentials often you know, dealing with suppliers, often serving their customers. It didn't leave time to think about business trends. It didn't leave time to uh, think about social media. It didn't leave time to uh, think about e-commerce. And that's when DMS, Digital Main Street, came onto my radar, really intrigued me. Um, it was a program, as everyone knows here, that really is a lifeline to a lot of these local businesses. Uh, so when I think of DMS, uh, I think of it being, you know, uh, a perfect fit for the right, the right program and the right timing. Um, these businesses have had such a uh, economic impact and a social impact uh, on their city. So it leaves me wondering about the question: If they've invested so much into our community can we not invest back in them? And I think that is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the promise of DMS. And that's why I will personally continue to do everything I can to help the program and uh, promote our main street businesses. Uh, Sonia, that's, uh, that's about it for me. So much, I resonate with everything you said. Home is where the heart is and it's our main street businesses that make our neighborhoods home. Yeah. That's it, that's the bottom line. So thank you. Yeah your championship and support. I am now going to welcome back to the DMS ambassador stage someone who joined us at the very beginning in the launch of this program, Always Khan, founder and owner of Ottawa Samosa. And coming off of that brilliant overview from Michael, home is where the heart is. This is a family story. I love your story, Always. And you know what? We couldn't be more thrilled that you and your wife, Romana, I know she is the, the main chef, um, have really built up Ottawa Samosa. Your food is amazing. I know that you have a story to share with us. We're very grateful for your support and for being with us today. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, for having me. And uh and I too resonate with everything that Michael said, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my story and my experience with DMS. Um, my wife and I started Ottawa Samosa in 2014, um, but we didn't actually move into our own commercial kitchen until just last February, so right before the pandemic hit. Um, and so that was, you know, like, a brick wall that that, that hit us uh, because 
since 2014, up until that point, our biggest hurdle was finding a commercial kitchen and, you know, and, and moving in. So when we were finally able to do that, um, the pandemic, uh, you know, came upon us. So our business model was at that time um, relying heavily upon foot traffic. You know, our commercial kitchen is located inside the back of a of an Indian grocery store called Kinetic Cash and Carry. So um, having the ability to have a face to face with potential customers, um, introduce our products, introduce ourselves, um, you know, provide them with some free samples that quickly was taken away from us because of the uh, restrictions that were put in place. So like all businesses, um, we had to adapt. We had to find um, another way to reach our customers. Um, and so we had a website. Um, we just didn't have a very intuitive uh, one. So our first step was to um, create a more uh, intuitive website. And that is beyond my expertise. I don't have that um, that knowledge in uh, in website design or anything like that. So I happened to come across an email in my inbox um, from Invest Ottawa because I had um, been involved with Invest Ottawa uh, through the Starter Company Plus program, um, and and I saw it was an email about the Digital Main Street um, and uh, the uh, Future Proof program. So uh, of course it was a no-brainer for me. I signed up, and uh, and uh, I was very excited when I got accepted into that uh, program. Uh, and uh, it, it was great. I mean, DMS program was great, even better than I had expected. Uh, they had a team of experts um, in different fields that could uh, guide me in things such as uh, digital marketing, graphic design, content writing, uh, UX UI design. It was like having a, a, a small marketing agency working directly with me um, to help me. Um, and so we would you know, set up a meeting a couple of times a week. Um, and for those four weeks that I worked um, with the team, uh, I learned a lot. And I continue to implement um, the things that I learned uh, up to this day. Um, so having a website is, is one thing, but being able to create uh, a good website and one that's easy to navigate, one that customers can make their purchases directly on the website, an e-commerce website, um, having knowledge about reaching your customers through digital, uh, uh, through social media, all of these things, uh, I didn't have the knowledge and digital marketing, the, the digital Main Street uh, group helped me uh, you know, learn about that. So, so that was great. Um, so, you know, having gone through this, uh, it's still it's still a struggle. We're still in survival mode. We're still, you know, trying to um, find our, our, our niche and trying to get our, our word out. And um, as Michael was saying that, you know, my day to day is is occupied with just, you know, getting the, the business uh, going. Um, so I don't have too much time to spend on the digital marketing part of it. Um, but uh, that being said, you know, the, the things that I learned through this program have been very valuable and, and the program is uh, you know, something that I would highly recommend to other uh, small business owners. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I'm uh, very happy with, uh, with the DMS program and I would definitely recommend it. Always, we absolutely value all of your time and you know what, everyone in Ottawa needs to experience your food, frankly, so it's amazing that you've taken advantage of this program because so many of our friends and colleagues and neighbors across this region are gonna benefit. Thank you very, very much for being with us today. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce our next founder, Jill Wright. She is founder and owner of an amazing new consignment store in Rockland called Hearts Content Consignment. Some people know I enjoy a little shopping now and again. So I'm really excited to hear from you. She offers previously owned clothing while promoting green practices. Completely novel and innovative. So excited to hear, Jill, how you leverage DMS. Well, thank you so much for having me. And of course, thank you to everyone who's been involved. I know there's been a lot of thank yous um, already. Being the last one, I feel like I can just say a general thank you for everyone uh, who participated in making this event happen. Um, I participated in two different programs from Digital Main Street. I first did shop here. I got myself, um, I didn't do it, my um, 
<laughs> my colleagues through Digital Main Street got me set up with an e-commerce platform. Um, and then I participated in the uh, Future Proof program. So uh, both were invaluable in different ways and in different stages of my company. Um, like Oase, I kind of hit uh, a roadblock with the pandemic. My store opened in um, July of last summer. It was supposed to open in April, but of course everything was shut down at that point. Um, and I quickly realized that I was going to need an online platform because of the restrictions and, uh, and the fear and the unknowns, the retail patterns uh, for foot traffic were very different than uh, in previous and than I had expected. So it was such a thrill to get online, to be able to uh, access my customers digitally uh, and have a website that was just gorgeous, that really did everything I wanted it to. Um, and through the Future Proof program, we really expanded on that. So I had an insane team of students um, and, and young adults who were professional and so skilled and so creative. And they helped me identify what's my brand all about? And is that being portrayed properly in all of the different areas that are customer facing online? Um, so they helped me a lot with my brand identity, helped me shape up my website uh, and really give me a, a digital marketing strategy, which I didn't have before. So all of those were key pieces in helping me make, th make it through these, um, months and and really hard times of shut down and you know just everything that we've uh, we've experienced so um i mean in closing i'll just share a little anecdote with you about my store actually tomorrow is going to be our last day of operation here in our bricks and mortar so it was a really difficult decision for me to have to uh shut the doors here uh fortunately i did have that really strong online presence digital platform to be able to still run my company from my basement now. <laughs> so um, thank you so much to DMS for setting me up with that, with those important resources and the knowledge to, to run it myself, even though I had to pivot in a really big way. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Jill. It is so inspirational and um, we just very grateful that you shared your story and I know you will inspire many, many others. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for everything. You have had the chance to hear from a lot of great people who join you in one big ambition to help our Main Street business survive and thrive. And now we want to hear from all of you. We're going to move to the breakout just rooms very, very shortly. We're going to ask you to join us with your video and audio. You don't have to turn your camera on if you're not comfortable. The system is going to ask you to test your camera, your audio and your firewall to make sure that you're all set up. Uh, and then you choose uh, the room that you'd like to join. There are going to be three, trying to keep an equal number for different participants. So if you see one with a lower number, hop on in there. We'd really appreciate that. Each room is gonna be hosted and moderated by our team members. Everyone is invited uh, to share their thoughts and feedback, but not required to engage. You can be an observer as well, and you can move across the different rooms too. So we're now gonna click over into the breakout rooms. Please get ready to share your feedback and ideas. We are here to hear from you and take your ideas and put them to work. So thank you very much, and we'll see you right back here in about 25 minutes. Back everyone. I know if your group was anything like my group, there was vigorous discussion, uh, a lot of ideas. We didn't even have enough time to pack in all of those who wanted to share thoughts, questions, concerns. If you did not get an opportunity to share that feedback, we are going to be reaching out to you with a survey. You can find me on LinkedIn and many of my colleagues reach out to us. We want your ideas. We want your feedback. We got some great insight into some of the concerns that are still, of course, facing small business. I'm going to be bringing those right back to my team uh, and we're going to be working with that insight and we need as much as possible. So I apologize, Muna. I know you got cut off as you were asking me a question. Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Lee, same thing. Reach out to me um, and we really do want to hear from everyone. So thank you all for being a part of today. Um, when I look back at all the ideas that you've shared all across this journey of the last year um, for supporting DMS and how we can help you better, um, it has been invaluable. So please continue to feed that to us. We thank you for championing so many small businesses and this program. We can't do it without you. 
We have two big events coming up uh, this month, which we think will be really valuable given the challenges we're all facing currently. And Jess, I know you're gonna pop them up on the screen. Next Tuesday, March 23rd at 12 noon, Why Location is Still Everything, featuring best-selling author and thought leader in digital transformation, David Arbel. David is a pioneer and thought leader on the digital economy, a specialist in equipping companies to weather challenges and harness opportunities during times like this. He's going to draw on his award-winning book, Location is Still Everything, to provide you with a powerful framework about how you can still win in this digital economy. Ideas and actionable insight you can put to work. So please register today and spread the word across your networks. The second event is an extension of our International Women's Week, which many of you were a part of, so thank you so much. This one is Playing Hurt, how to keep building your business even when you don't feel like it, and how pertinent and important is that during these challenging times. This one will be hosted by my friend Sarah Roach-Lewis on Tuesday, March 30th. Please, if you know business owners who identify as women that really need that extra support, please advise them of this workshop. Everything completely free, of course. As I mentioned, you're going to receive a survey. We want to hear from you. We want your feedback. It's two minutes. I promise you nothing more, um, but it makes a big difference in terms of how we go forward. Um, and if we receive your permission, we will add you to our ambassador networking list, something that we know so many ambassadors are looking for, the chance to work, meet and collaborate together to do more business with each other. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help build your business and help you survive and many others well into the future beyond this pandemic. Thank you for your incredible support. Please reach out to us. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you, everyone.